Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you happen to see this, I would like to offer the uh, relationship, love, romance, all that good stuff reading for the elemental energy of fire for the month of November 2024. The nice thing about doing general readings is they are timeless, so take what works for you whenever you hear this, leave the rest for somebody else. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they're linked in the description down below. You know, also there is, if you've never had your charts done, birth charts and all that, there's a natal chart down below. It also comes with what they call the Merlin Report, which is 10 to 20 pages, depending on what's all in those 12 houses. <laughs> of information about the placements within there so you can check all that out it also tells you what your elemental alignment is and most people have two that they're really high in and then there's two that they're either low or have nothing in um, for example like mine is very high in water and air but zero fire and very little earth <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting thing to see but with that, we'll get into our readings. Um, I, how I like to do my readings is I read for the singles first, those who are not in a, an active relationship or those not really looking at the moment. And then we'll look at those who are in relationships, the couples. So we'll start off with the singles for fire. We have number 45 and this deck is a chakra deck. And so it's where Kind of where your energy focus is at the moment is how I read these and what kind of energies are coming into the relationship from those chakras. So for our fire singles we have number 45 oneness and I'll give you my, the my guidance and then we'll look at the book. Um, what I'm hearing for this one is this is a time of unification. This is not really a time to be separate from everyone else. You can be separate but also be connected to them is what I'm hearing when we tap into that energy of oneness for fire singles this is really saying even when you're out in public even when you're alone by yourself there is this connected energy field that we are all tapped into so with this one and I'm thinking I'm gonna guess that this one is probably the crown or the third eye chakra but what I'm hearing is this is a really good time for you to look at the duality that's in within you the positive, the negative, the masculine traits, the feminine traits, and it doesn't matter which gender you are, we all carry both within us to differing degrees. Um, but to really check in with yourself and see how the du duality within yourself is balanced, because when we understand what goes on in here, because the microcosm is a mirror to the macro, you can understand what's going on in the greater world to a certain extent. So that's what I'm hearing with this is just this is a good time this month to not so much go out seeking external connections or anything like that. Really work on yourself and really get that grounded anchored in for our fire singles. So according to the book, this card is at the crown chakra, the top of the uh, pair, or top of the line here. Uh, the card's deity is I love some of these names. Kamashwara. Divinely handsome Kamashwara, or another name for Shiva, sits in oneness with his consort Kamashwari, an embodiment of Lalita Shakti, the goddess of love. Shiva and Shakti are united as one. Their transformation, transformative union illustrates lunar negative feminine energy and sunlit masculine positive energy that flow like electric currents upward along the spine through the lower six chakras, merging beyond duality at the top. So this is them in their individual states up here. I don't know if you can see that very well. And then this is the unification energy that comes out of it. And what they're saying with that is there's this energy of when you merge those two energies, the masculine and the feminine, it actually elevates the energy up through your system. So it's a way of uh, reaching a form of enlightenment is what I'm hearing. So the key words Oneness, love, connectedness, pure spirit, 
your ability to reflect another's truth, unity, union, finding common ground, and being able to agree with others. So this month is really about finding some stability within yourself, which is going to open up doors for relationships later. But in the moment, it's definitely saying you have some of your own things to work through this month, fire. And it's not that you're bad or anything else. It's not good, bad, and different. It's just saying this is for the general. This is not a time to go hunting a relationship. This is a good time to do some self-reflection, some inner work. And from being working with your crown, it's because you've done the found foundational work. And now you're accessing the crown chakra so you can connect into your higher aspects and to God's source divine in a much more powerful way. Your tarot is number 17, so these are major arcana, big life lessons. It's number 17, the star. Look to the future with hope and optimism, the power of faith to move mountains, happy changes that bring relief from t challenging times. So with this one, it's saying, and this is uh, Glastonbury well in oh, the picture here, what it's saying is when you start to elevate, when you start to really tap into that higher frequency, you're tapping into something that is beyond this world. The stars do not interact with our planet in a direct way. It's They influence it by energy. So when you tap into that oneness, you're also tapping into the divine heart of the creator, which is beyond the stars, which is beyond comprehension, really. And that's when you start to really expand your knowledge, your awareness. And fire singles for this month, it's really... They're really wanting to emphasize this uplifting energy, this growth potential. Excuse me. Um, and it's also saying when you work with the stars, it's definitely tapping into the positive aspects of fire's energy. And for fire, it's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So look at the positive aspects of whichever birth sign you're under and see what you can draw forward for that and take the negative part of it and how can you merge that into something more positive to grow and expand with? Your second card is the Ten of Winter. The resolution of difficulties, a weight lifted off your shoulders, the end of an addiction or codependency. So this is actually kind of a good follow-up to the star because you're connecting into that higher aspect and that's allowing you to shed the layers of self, the ego self, that are no longer serving. What is it you want to let go of? This is the time to let it go. When you connect into that stellar energy, that amazing, powerful solar or solar stellar star energy, especially going through your zodiac sign, because that's where stars are. <laughs> when you tap into that, it allows you to actually deal with any of the conflict that's going on inside, and it allows you to free up yourself to move forward in a very healthy way. So, fire singles. It's definitely a good month to check in with your higher self, tap into uh, the merging of opposites, bringing yourself into a stronger state of who you are. They're also saying this is a good time to shed a layer or two because, you know, <laughs> it's winter time. Unless you're going out skiing, there's not much else to do in the evenings. So, t definitely take the time to check in with yourself. Take yourself a little deeper and look at ways you can merge those two energies. How is it you can take something that's maybe not even the best form of who you are, but bring it into a positive light? So, um, quick side note, if you've ever watched or heard of a woman named Debbie Ford, she talks about sometimes you have to be a uh, <laughs> B word. I'm trying. I won't go too crude here to get things done. Does that mean that you have to be that way all the time? No, but there's times and places where that's actually not a negative thing to stand up and say enough's enough. And so with this reading is what I'm hearing is really learn how the negative, the shadow, the parts of yourself that you're like, oh, I've got to hide that. No one can ever see that. But how can you make that into something that is beneficial? Bring that negative into the positive, join those things as a union and you might be surprised what comes out of that so we'll hop on over to our fire couples for november of 2024 so fire couples we have uh oh 
Number 35, this is Rigidity. There's an elephant in the middle. What I'm hearing from this one is old patterns that need to fall away, being stuck in the past, not being able to acknowledge that you have grown beyond who you used to be. You are, what I'm hearing fire couples, and this is a little bit on the harsh side for you, what do you need to do to break the mold you're in? Because what's what you're doing right now worked in the past, but going forward, they're saying this is not going to be the best option, and it's a really good time to make some adjustments. Um, again, this is not a like hostile negative card. It's more of a kind of slap you on the back of the head, be like, wake up, what are you doing? <laughs> type energy. So we are in the throat chakra that's what this card is for the 35 is in the throat um, the animal nature is the elephant elephant is one of the most intelligent animals were domesticated however often decked out with the adornments that come with having learned to be obedient and respond as its master wants to the elephant loses its independence that comes with thinking for itself it thinks and acts as it is told to do that it is doing the right thing even when it's not. Even so, traditionally, the elephant is linked with power of memory, patience, and an intuitive understanding of nature. Keywords, dogmatism versus flexible thinking, memory, coming to terms with difficult issues, searching for the key to self-understanding, and learning patience. Fire couples. Just because you're in a relationship does not mean that you give up your personal autonomy. Just because you're in a relationship does not mean that you have to say no to everything that is not a couple. The healthiest couples that I have seen do a lot together, but they each have their individual lives. And what this is really saying is don't get wrapped up in that, well, we're in a relationship and we can't do anything. We can't have any friends that we don't share together. We don't do this. We don't do that. No, you're allowed to have those outside friends within certain restrictions, obviously, because you're in a relationship. Um, but that's where in a lot of other cultures the men will have their men time the women will have their women time but they go home to their partner they go home to their spouse they are not out you know caterwauling carrying on till all hours of the night it's like poker night for the boys it's you know um, painting and wine with the ladies or whatever it is that you like to do <laughs> it's that type of thing so it's healthy it's safe as far as the relationship goes but they're saying you don't have to be so locked into this image of, well, this is what we've been told and this is what we must do. And we've get, and in a relationship, you don't want to give up your individuality to become one. That's what a marriage is. That's what hand fasting is, to become one. But it doesn't mean that you sacrifice your entire personality on the altar of the relationship. It's two individuals that have agreed to join in a physical and spiritual sense, which is helping them both to grow and develop towards a spirit state of oneness. But you're still two people in that relationship. So it's not a bad thing to still have a distinct personality. And trust me, the longer you're together, you're going to start acting alike. Just that's how it works. Um, I met a couple at my day job just the other day they'd been together for 62 years and they still acted like teenagers it was kind of funny to watch <laughs> they were picking at each other and like laughing and joking but then they'd answer questions at the same time where it was like wait what <laughs> so there's a ways that it, you do actually bond to that point but you still ha are allowed to have the outside friendships again within certain boundaries your Tarot is the princess of spring, optimistic, enthusiastic, creative, and energetic. It's time to go after your dreams. Do something that expands your horizons. Let your creativity take flight. They're saying that this is a good as uh, avenue to expand your, your mind and, real and expand your consciousness. And by doing so, you're actually going to strengthen the relationship and the bond between the two. If you're wanting to go out and join like a pottery thing and it's just you know all one gender or the other go for it and see what you can learn and when you come back be excited to share that with your spouse if you go out because you like sports and your partner's like yeah no off with you 
go do that and then come home and share that excitement with them. And you as the partner at home, share the excitement of what they're having. You didn't have to go, it's all right, but they're excited. So live with, the, live through them that exciting moment. The Princess of Spring is really about being excited with each other, even though you weren't there. Being optimistic and looking for the best possible outcome from these situations, because that's what you're, that's what we're here for. We're here to enjoy this life. And if you are in a relationship, you're all the more. You are here to enjoy it with another person. So enjoy that. Look for the reasons to be happy and to enjoy every aspect of who and what your relationship is. Your second card is the Six of Autumns. The good you do comes back to you, an unexpected inflow of money, borrowing wisely or repaying a debt. Interestingly enough, I'm hearing with this one that you're paying off a mortgage. I don't know why that's the first thing that came up, but it's paying off a mortgage or paying off some massive debt that is actually going to set you guys up for success in the future. But it's also about when you're doing good things and you're allowing your partner to enjoy life, you're living life, but you're sharing the joys with each other. You're growing together. Even when you're doing stuff apart, this is that doing the good and being trusting of each other. Don't abuse that trust. Never do that. But you're allowing yourself to build and that trust. You're expanding your heart's uh, connection to your partner. That is just going to boil and bubble and carry on and expand. And it's going to be eventually, over time, everything's with time, become the model like Norman Rockwell type thing. You're going to continue to grow in love and devotion with each other. And through that devotion, you're also going to start to understand at a different level just exactly how much God's source divine actually cares about us too. So fire couples, it looks like you have got an amazing month going on for you. Everything is turning up roses. Just a little reminder, you're two individuals in a relationship who chose to be there. So don't sacrifice your individualities. The one thing that they keep bringing up, be in the marriage, be in the relationship, grow within that, but still remember that you're kind of, you know, you're two people that you're growing together. You're not there yet. So over time <laughs> with that, I will let you guys go. Have a great rest of the month and enjoy your relationships or your singleness. <laughs>